be advised. If the opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Good evening, welcome to Expat in Science. I'm your host Raju Mandi and here at Expat in Science we take external views of internal successes by foreigners, expats and immigrants who have made Philippines their home. Today we are very fortunate to have guests from a country, the land of the rising sun, Japan. Uh, Japan and Philippines have had a very long lasting relationship. It's mutually beneficial and mutually loving. Uh, today our guest, our first guest, from JICA, that's the Japan International Cooperation Agency, International Cooperation Agency, the senior representative, Mr. Mitsugi Hiroto, and our second guest, who has been in and out of the Philippines for a very long time, working in the slums of Manila and of Jordan. She used to be with KNK and now runs a small restaurant uh, uh, with children from the streets. Her name is Yachio Nakamura, the founding and general manager of Unique Kase. Unique is or Kase Unique in Tagalog. So welcome to Expat in Size. Thank you. How do you say welcome in Japanese? Yokoso. Sorry? Yokoso. Yokoso Expat in Size. <laughs> Thank you for having us. So uh, tell us a bit about yourself, uh, a little bit about your personal background and how you came to be in the Philippines. Maybe you'd like to start first. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. My name is Yachi. Um, I basically studied a business uh, marketing, especially before, and I was focusing on the business. However, uh, somehow I started being interested in uh, international cooperation. Therefore, I became an NGO staff before. NGO. A NGO mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Japan. And I was working as a fundraiser inside Japan. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I was very fortunate to uh, receive that opportunity to come to the Philippines. Then I started uh, taking care of street children and uh, OSY, which is uh, out of school youth. That's the beginning of the doing this kind of thing. Is it what they are called <coughs> out of school youth? Mm -hmm. Is that how is the right term for it? Uh, that's what I heard from the Filipino society. So that's politically correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, I we don't so. want to be insulting yeah. anyone. Right, right. Uh, in fact, we call them like uh, uh, children at risk. Uh, children at risk, I think that's the correct word. Including the neglected yeah. children or abandoned children. Abandoned children. Street oh, children, right. etc. All right, Sir so, uh, Mitsugi. Yes, thank you. Uh, how do you say a welcome again? <laughs> Yokoso. Yokoso. So can you please tell us about yourself, sir? So my, my basic background is uh, on nature conservation and the wildlife and the forest. So then I spent a lot of time in the outside to conserve the nature and something in my organization. Right. And for how long have you been doing this? Well, it's uh, almost 22 years now. And um, it's quite fantastic. And I really enjoyed it, the jobs and to find them. You have come to the Philippines only three months ago. Yes. And your background has been in Cambodia, United Kingdom, Italy, and a country called Malawi. Yes. Where is Malawi? Well, quite small countries. Uh, it's stated in the southern part of Africa, mm -hmm. the neighbor is Zambia and Tanzania. And yeah. So that um, my first assignment in outside country is Malawi. Malawi. Yes. Is it called Malawi? Yeah. It's Malawi. So um, basically, I, I engaged in that um, national park conservation, so which means so every month I spend a week in the national park and to watch animals and also to have the quite a good nice meeting with local communities. It in was Malawi. so exciting. 
So uh, before we go into the depths of the work you do in the Philippines, you run a restaurant for uh, abandoned children and you are with JICA, which is a major agency. Uh, can you give us a little bit of a background of Philippines and Japan from your perspective? I'm sure you're not historians, but if you can tell us, like, what's the relationship should been like for Japan and Philippines? Any one of you can go first. Okay. So, in my personal views, personal view, yeah. Yeah. Uh, first one is uh, myself. Uh, my first experience in outside country, it is Philippines. So, when I was a student in Japan, yes, I, it was also 25 or 26 years ago. Okay. 26 years ago, uh, wha I was in the Bagolo cities in the Negros Island. Oh, you came to Bacolod? Yes. Bacolod, is it? Bacolod. Yeah. Right. That time, I was a member of the NGOs. Mm -hmm. I spent one year. So that is my starting point in outside countries. So it's quite fortunate it was Philippines. So, and then also let me back to the something the relationship between Japan and the Philippines. Yes, sir. It's my understanding that historically, uh, so many uh, Japanese migrants to the Philippines, and then almost hundred years ago. So it's uh, nowadays. Also, we have uh, so many Philippine persons was staying in Japan and also quite good communities, I think. Mm -hmm. There are uh, how many Japanese in the Philippines? Well, I heard maybe around 30,000 or 40,000. 30 to 40,000. Yeah. How many Filipinos in Japan? I think more or less 20 or 30,000 Philippines. Yeah, because I, I hear a lot of Filipinos going yeah. to Japan for work, Japan for work. So my, my suspicion is that there may be a lot of ja Filipinos in Japanese. So that's the history you know of Philippine Japan. How about you, Ms. Yachi? Yes. Um, in fact, uh, when I was working for the uh, children uh, on the street or in the community, um, I found that the lots of similarity and then differences. Uh, basically, um, Somehow, like a very uh, Filipino people are very friendly, yeah. and then uh, we get the you know uh, along with each other as a friend right away. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, I think we used to have the uh, similarity, which is the kind of family gathering, mm. Um, mm. which we are almost losing in, in Japan at this moment, oh, unfortunately. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So um, I thought that it's kind of a Latin country. It's but like uh, Latin uh, because right. the culture uh, is Latino. Exactly, in the yeah. right. But uh, I found that similarity. On the other hand, in terms of perseverance or like Filipino people are very fast learner. Fast runner? Uh, no, I mean learner. A uh, learner. Yes, so they, they can learn. Fast learner. That's right. And then, uh, but uh, sometimes they get bored or something. And then on the other hand, Japanese people cannot do right away but oh. step by step always mm. with the uh, patience mm. so that uh, we try to achieve the goal or something. Oh, okay. So it's a uh, similarity and then differences between mm -hmm. two countries. Okay. Uh, that's why we can learn from each other. Okay, uh, we'll be taking a break. So mm -hmm. I got to know you. You meant a quick learner. <laughs> so I understand what you mean. Filipinos adapt quickly, mm -hmm. but Japanese take a little more time to adapt, mm -hmm. no? My one question, just quickly if you can, no? What bonds us so much? There's that special love and romance between Japan <laughs> and the Philippines. Mm. I have no idea why. The Filipinos love Japan, love as a love. And so do you. What's the reason in your mm, Maybe human relationship, I think. Maybe human mm -hmm. relationship, okay. Yes. Well, and also just the same as um, Yachi said, maybe that uh, we have some similarities particularly how to respect elders and mm. to also put a priority on the families. Mm -hmm. So that is quite similar to this. So that's why we may have some sympathy between us. Mm, that must be a sympathy. Okay, so thank you for this. And we'll take that break and we'll come back. So please stay with us. I'm your host, Raju Mantian. And we have with Sir Mitsugi and Miss Nakamura. We'll come back and talk about Philippine-Japan relationship. See you in a while. Yo, what's 
Welcome back to Explain Science. I'm your host, Rajiv Mahandi, and we are still with Mr. Mitsugi and Ms. Nakamura from Japan, and we'll be talking to them about what they're doing in the Philippines. Uh, sir uh, Mitsugi, so can you tell us about JICA now? Uh, what is JICA, and when was it started? Yes, um, the JICA is the agency, a governmental agency of Japan. Right. So we are supporting to the developing countries mm -hmm. using Japanese budget. So nowadays, uh, we have with more than 100 overseas office to promoting that uh, from a program supporting to the social services for alleviating poverty and also pushing on the some economic growth in the developing countries. What is the purpose of JICA? On what purpose was it founded? Well, uh, the basic idea is uh, so-called official development assistance mm -hmm. to support developing countries mm -hmm. uh, in their due of the Japanese exercise to outside. So um, basically that uh, we understand that the poverty and also environment and then supporting the economic growth is a common issue in the world. So particularly uh, maybe one of the duty of developing countries to support for developing countries. So in the areas of, uh, what kind of areas do you support? What well, are common, common good areas for the whole world? What are these areas? Well, um, our first priority area is Asia, and the second one in African countries, and also including that South and Central America as well. So uh, in particular in Asia, of course Asia is our neighbors, and we support a lot. And the with among the Asian countries, the Philippines is also the quite historical country mm -hmm. to support it. Uh, besides geographical areas, uh, said Mitsugi, I meant uh, areas like environment, education, economy. Which of these areas does JICA cater to more? Which disciplines? Yeah, our yeah, discipline is uh, the human securities, how to secure the human environment and living condition. Uh, but quite uh, wide range of the uh, concept it was human securities but human securities means how to just avoid any fears and then also to, uh, to create a good environment to the peoples mm -hmm. so in that context also we include the education and the social securities and then to have the good natures mm -hmm. and of course uh, to promote employment mm -hmm. is a quite key factors Right. So all areas. So here in the Philippines, <coughs> what area do you focus upon? Are you focusing on education, health, or are you focusing on the environment? More environment more here in the Philippines. What part is that? We have with the three priorities. First one is uh, peace building. Peace building. Okay. In particular, looking at internal issues. Yeah. And the second one is uh, to develop the economic growth and to promote employment areas of peace, growth, and employment. And the third one is the poverty reduction. I'm sorry? Poverty reduction. Poverty reduction. Yes. Uh, what have you done in each of these areas? What is actively going on? What has been successfully done? Well, in the case of the peace building, um, we put uh, some of the budget to the social security fund to the Mindanao, uh, which 
supporting that education and also social services in Mindanao. Mm -hmm. And then for case of the infrastructures and economic growth, uh, we're promoting that road network and then to uh, making that uh, new facility the airport. And also uh, we support agrarian reform, like agrarian reform? Yeah, improvement irrigation system yeah. and something. Can you cite an example of anything that's going on in the Philippines right now, which is being supported by JICA? Well, um, quite a typical thing is maybe that the airport, like uh, Iloilo Airport and the Bagorodea, Air, Bagorodea City Airport right. is quite a new one that we, we are supporting to that establishment. And you support this in what manner? Are you hands-on with the construction? Is Japan, uh, JICA hands-on with the construction, or do you just fund it and manage it, or do you use agencies? What is the means of, okay. how, what is the process of support? We have is maybe three approach. First one, as you said, we fund. Fund funding, funding, yeah. funding, yeah. funding yeah. Yeah. Money, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the second one mm -hmm. is how to maintain that constructed one, mm -hmm. so which called uh, capacity building, mm -hmm. we train the staff and the technical transfer to the customer. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the final one is that maybe the kind of training uh, we invite is the Philippine peoples to Japan to to put in some opportunities mm -hmm. to learn uh, the current situation and the new knowledge and the skills mm -hmm. in Japan. Okay, now the question that I want to follow up with that one is uh, what belief system or what Japanese philosophy mm. yeah, wants you to do this besides the common sense that it's good for the whole globe, for the whole earth, no? but what Japanese philosophy drives it? I know the Japanese are very disciplined and very perfect in what they do. That's one of their uh, biases, but what philosophy drives it? Well. It's not so easy to answer. I but know. That's <laughs> why it took a long time in making that question. Well, um, in my case, uh, it's my experience in uh, other countries. Every time, just people ask, "What the philosophy in Japan is that?" Well, I think that the best secret is we just respect the natures, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. and then also. Also, we believe may, maybe the nature also to guide us mm -hmm. to do that. And then also in addition to that, of course, it, uh, Japan is a, one of Asian countries. We have with very close community ties. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, uh, we have to just pay attention to the environment mm -hmm. at the same time. Also, we just keep the good relationship among participants or okay. members. So you see the big picture, you see the connections. No? Uh, let me come to you, Ms. Nakamura. No? Now, you are a lone ranger. <laughs> you're like a lone samurai. <laughs> you're not with JICA, you're not with any agency, and you are here in the Philippines doing good. So uh, before I ask you what you're doing, what's your philosophy about doing good? Like uh, people need to have a mission. Um, there are so many different kind of uh, uh, desire. Like uh, uh, we would like to have uh, this kind of material things or house or family, etc. Right. Uh, even love. But uh, the, I always mention to the uh, youth that we have to focus on the six steps: like uh, environmental issue, behavioral issues, uh, ability, identity, or belief, etc. But beyond that, there is the love. Um, that Wait, the spiritual six things. six steps. What are the six uh, uh, steps? Environment. Environment. Yes. And then behavior. Behavior mm -hmm. as in relationships. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we are doing. Right. And then the ability. How we can do it. The 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 process. Yeah. Mm -hmm, that's yeah. right. And then belief, like oh. value, uh, okay. identity, and then the finally spiritual things or something. Oh, so this is the lowest. Environment is the lowest. And the, the highest. Oh, like okay. just like a triangle. I okay, and share. but you believe that beyond mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. the one driving force is love. Mm -hmm. Explain like a that. mission in okay. a way. Like uh, uh, because I lost uh, my family, therefore um, I lost my hope or dream uh, when I was twenty years, uh, twenty years mm. old. Then uh, uh, during that time, I wanted to 
live, you know, the, the country, you know, I mean, uh, the world. But wow. somehow, uh, God gave me this life still. Then I realized that maybe I have to dedicate myself for the people. And then while we are, I'm doing it, I feel like comfortable in a way. I'm doing the mission or something. So uh, that's why I am doing this, uh, not only for myself, especially for the youth or children. That is my motto in a way. I don't want to pry too much, you know, <laughs> I mean, about it. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you want to share, how that turnaround came, any details you want to add to that mm -hmm. spiritual, emotional turnaround <laughs> that hey, it's not about me, but maybe if I help somebody else, it'll change. Can you want to explain that a bit more? Give us a little background if you can. Uh, uh, about myself? Yeah, uh, wh when the turnaround happened. Um, in fact, uh, I was kind of desperate, de desperate like uh, this, uh, depressed. Disillusion. Mm -mm, Disillusion, yes, okay. Uh, 20, no, 15 years ago or something. And then um, during that time, I didn't have hope or something, but uh, one time, uh, some people came to me uh, to support me, and then I just realized how many, you know, uh, wonderful people around me. Mm. That time I realized I have to work for people, not for me. That's what oh, I thought. Oh, so you were not getting uh, attention and love from mm -hmm. one direction, but you got it from the rest of the world, and then you realized that's right. a course. Right. Fantastic. Now, what exactly are you doing in the Philippines? What is Unikase? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Unikase, by the way, is the name of a restaurant. <laughs> yet, uh, that's in Japanese. In English, it sounds like Unikis. Mm -hmm. And in Tagalog, she was saying it's Kase Unique. Right. So mm -hmm. what is that and yes. how did you come about with that? Mm -hmm. Unikase is established last year in order to provide the youth uh, with some hope or job opportunity. Because there are so many people, uh, especially youth or children, are suffering in the yeah. commun community. Yeah. And uh, even though NGOs or other people provide the educational uh, assistance or chances, uh, even though they graduate from high school, they cannot find a job. Mm. So if they cannot uh, find a job, obviously they cannot have uh, income. And then uh, those people are fooling around and then they, they just waste their time or talent. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually they have uh, own children and then they cannot uh, send them uh, the school, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of uh, worst cycle happened. Mm -hmm. So uh, at this moment, uh, some of youth with me uh, to stand up and then also they create some kind of job opportunity for themselves mm -hmm. and then also for the future of children at risk. That's our motto. Children at risk, mm -hmm. Yes. So, so you have a restaurant, yes, which is that's right. Japanese food? Uh, in a way, fusion. Yeah, we it's a fusion respect, food, okay. Mm -mm, yeah, fusion. we respect the uh, uh, Filipino ingredients because mm -hmm. the Philippines there are so many vegetables or fruits etc resource so we would like to expand that kind of uh, uh, things into the, the benefits for the future people. Sir Mitsugi is there any way that JICA can support <laughs> this beautiful endeavor? Sometimes I visited the restaurant yes. you did it's very yes. nice taste <laughs> yeah and then the good taste is the food and then also drinking as well <laughs> No, so compared to what you are doing in a big picture and she's doing it hands on, no? mm -hmm. uh, which do you think is much more advantageous for the future? To change the world one step at a time or to do it in a very strategic way as you're doing it? As I Jaika is doing think it. that is uh, both of them are very important and needed to how to just make the combine yeah. and also how to just make the interface. Mm -hmm. to just keep strategies and then also the quite uh, practical activities. Mm -hmm. So maybe this mix is very, yeah. very important to, to the countries. This combination of big picture and small picture, no? Yes, without small picture, big yeah. picture cannot. That's a picture coming from JICA, uh, Sir Mitsugi. What is that? Are you helping out in the forest or are you... Um, this is either the supporting uh, organic farming yeah. uh, to produce uh, uh, farmers, yeah. uh, which means that to safety uh, production of visible. This is in uh, uh, Baguio somewhere? Yes, in the Benguet. Oh, it's in the north. It looks like That's a letter right. out there. All right. So uh, there'll be more pictures coming up and we'll ask you. This is uh, also JICA Endeavor, is this? Uh, this is their supporting activities for Philippine Coast Guard, mm -hmm. yes, to, to um, particularly we put on that 
I'll wait on the capacity building of the staff of Costa Guard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mm, okay, and, and this one, of course, is be, this belongs to Ms. Mm. Nakamura. This is the board, the sign, the menu, okay. Unicase. Exactly, yes, our uh, logo. That's it. And uh, next picture, the one that you are. What are you doing <laughs> oh. here? We are training the uh, youth because uh, they haven't graduated from university or yeah. any specific places. Therefore, yeah. they need to be trained before getting into the business. So these people are getting culinary training or uh, HRM mm -hmm. training, mm -hmm. what kind of training? Including is like education, mm -hmm. which is including the de team building, yeah. leadership, yeah. and then business, including marketing. Yeah. Also, uh, organizational structures, because they don't know the uh, organizations itself. And you're doing this single-handedly? Uh, plus interns. We have uh, mm. several interns from and Japan. These the people United are learning States. to cook? Right, yes. Exactly. All Filipinos, so there are mm -hmm. some expats too. That's right. Uh, they are Filipinos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Filipino okay. youth. Great. Congrats. So, mm -hmm. so that looks fantastic. So uh, let me ask you about uh, the, Fili uh, the Japanese in the Philippines. No? Besides JICA, these 30 to 40,000 Japanese that are here, what are they doing here? What kind of businesses are they? Well, I think that um, maybe the uh, first one is that of course, uh, private companies, uh, they have a lot of investment in the Philippines yeah. Yeah. and they promote some <coughs> job opportunities here. And also, I think the second one is uh, maybe retired person who are staying in the Philippines. Mm -hmm -hmm. Maybe they so much enjoy the life in the Philippines and then yeah. to feel very relaxed and that is yeah. quite good and nice weather. Yeah, so that's what they're doing, mostly business and retirement. Yes. No? Uh, given that, uh, Japan has suffered, so I'm sorry, to, sorry about this, in the last few months and years, no? the car industry of Japan has taken a setback and mm. then recently you had the tsunami. No? Mm. Uh, how is Japan doing? How is it recovering? And how soon do you see itself getting back to uh, the same level it was maybe a decade ago? Well, um, in the earthquake in case, of course now it's still the, in the process for recovery that yes. affected areas. Um, of course, I'm not sure exactly, but somebody just said at least one year is needed uh, to make this some recovery process. That's for the damage done by the tsunami. That's right. You know? yeah. One more year is needed. How about the economic recovery? Because the car industry This is in a Japan. quite long period it needed. And then in the factory, I think that uh, almost 10 years ago, we have the economic recessions. And still, we, we are in the process to recover the economic situation. Oh, you seen since the first Asian crisis of '97, you're on the recovery still from that that time, or just the recent one, in 2007, 2008. 2007, 2008. In that case, well, still on the process. Almost we have with six years in the past, but well, in fact, <coughs> I think that uh, early this years. Uh, economists say it. Now we are now in the stage of the, the improvement of economic situations. But mm -hmm. as you say, that in the tsunami in the uh, two months ago, it was also so many impact to the economy. Right, right. So I, I hear some of the spare parts, automobile spare is. parts makers were in that neighborhood right. of tsunami. So that's why the auto industry suffered a lot more. Is. is that correct? Is that correct? Uh, let me ask you both. You know, uh, Japan has a history of resilience and uh, being able to come back from disaster. It came back from the disaster of the First World War. It recovered really, really fast from the Second World War. In fact, it was looked up as an example of how to survive. You know? So what does what, does, what do Japanese do as a community that helps you recover fast? What is that special skills that you might have, a special discipline? What about the Japanese makes you come back so fast? Lady, because you <laughs> have come back too. Yeah. I think uh, perseverance, never give up spirit, I guess. Like uh, even though no matter what happens, yeah. uh, we will never give up mm -hmm. and then uh, we try to uh, keep the hope mm -hmm. that that's uh, bring us to the uh, kind of improvement or development. So uh, perseverance and hope. Mm -hmm. That's what. You, about you, sir. 
Um, I think so. Also, they have so that quite good vision in the futures. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to do that. That's yeah. Right. At the same time, also I feel many many support from outside country in this time. So this time, yeah. after the tsunami. So such sympathy also just to encourage them mm -hmm. to just go ahead in futures. Oh well, that's because you as a country have been helping uh, its neighbors for the longest time. So that's why you're getting it back. No, that's all right. So. Perseverance, hope, and community. That's what the group is. All right. Okay. We'll take a break right now. Then we'll come back and ask you something about the future of the Philippines and Japan. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's take that break. And we'll come back and talk to Sir Mitsugi and Miss Nakamura after this break. Stay with us. Good evening, welcome back to Expat Insights. I'm your host Raju Mandi and we're still talking to two Japanese people, Mitsugi and Miss Yakamura. So Mitsugi, now uh, can you give us a big picture of what uh, JICA is doing in the future? What, what are its plans yeah. and what should be the plans yes. for Philippines development? Well, still that we need uh, some of the activities for the economic growth and uh, development. But also uh, I think that now also, we need uh, another priority, like uh, how to just keep a good environment and to keep keep a good natural resources in the Philippines. So, maybe uh, the balance between the economy and also the, the uh, environment. So, yeah. how to keep a good mixtures is both of them. What are your ideas on balancing economic growth and? environmental sustainability. What are your ideas on that? Yes. Well, I think now in the Philippines, of course, is a, everybody know about it. So you have is quite good natures and a good environment. Yeah. But at the same time, also the, the certain development to affect some bad impact to the environment. So which means how to just secure that situation in the good environment in the Philippines. Well, maybe another word uh, in the Philippines is uh, you have a so-called hot spot, which means you have a quite good enough in that nature environment, but at the same time, also you may have the, uh, some of the dangerous situation to, to, uh, to lose the species. For example, can you cite an example? What are we talking about? Well, are we talking about marine? Uh, marine coral reef and yeah. then the forest destructions. Yeah. And then also the some mammal and species has been disappeared. Yeah. Yes. But isn't that happening all over the world or is it happening more in the Philippines? I think the Philippines is a little bit serious situation currently. In, uh, in what species, for example? What specific species? For example, Philippine eagle is a quite a rare species. Right. But now their own uh, living condition is very worsening and worsening. So that's right. why. So, so uh, what would your recommendations be to uh, let the Philippine so eagle and the Philippine tarsier live This on? is a Philippine eagle, just an example. But without a good nature and a good environment, people cannot survive. Right, in particular, right. that remote area and the marginal people who are very much rely on the, the natures. So that's why, how to just secure the good nature for the rural peoples. At the same time, also, still the continues to work for the uh, opportunity of employment. 
right, right. Uh, what, what are the ideas? What do you think are the ideas? What can we do? What are the steps we must do? Is it education? Is it something physical that we need to do? What is it that we must do or can do better? I said the basic one is education. So how do you just to understand the importance of nature, importance of a good environment as well? Mm -hmm. So the so-called education for like environmental education and mm -hmm. something is quite needed. Ah, so you're saying in schools, universities and colleges, besides teaching them how to get a job or how to earn money, there must be courses or curriculum that must cater so. to uh, educating them towards sustaining the planet, yes. sustaining the country. That's what is your recommendation. Yes. Is JICA doing anything about that? Well, um, in the field of those, uh, we have is, uh, many volunteers uh, who are teaching that math and the science teaching to the uh, teachers who are teaching that student. Where is this here in the Philippines? In the Philippines. Yeah. So how this is a quite practical activity. And these are JICA. How many people in JICA? How many? Uh, Currently, what's the whole we have either around 70 volunteers who are working in the Philippines. These are Japanese. Yeah, Japanese Japan volunteers. People? Yeah. And they are doing what you have just recommended. And these are volunteers. That means no pay. Well, it's a quite a basic payment, right? That right, is basic. No any other profit at all. What are your ideas, uh, Miss uh, Nakamura, for uh, the growth and development of both the countries, not just Japan, but the Philippines too? What, what's your perspective? Right. Uh, as uh, Mr. Mizuki mentioned, that education is very important. Yeah. Um, not only uh, subject things, mm -hmm. but also human education is uh, very important also. Uh, in addition to that, uh, in fact, uh, the, the volunteer people usually come to our restaurant also. After they go to the <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then they ha Because they have a kind of products yeah. which made by people here in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, and then they are teaching the skills or techniques mm -hmm. so that they are looking for the market as well. So mm -hmm. we sell as a tr uh, fair trade products at the same time. So oh, education. In, in un Unicase? Yes. Mm -mm, yes. So not only eating in our mm -hmm. restaurant, but they, uh, the customers can find uh, those kind of fair trade products from the JOCV or NGOs. What's, or what's JOCV? Uh, Japan <laughs> Overseas uh, Corporation Volunteers. Is that the, the, our volunteers? Japan Overseas Co Corporation Co Volunteers. volunteers. So you have a little exchange going on <laughs> in between. So people go to them, then so they macro come to and yes. micro. Micro. <laughs> Corporation. Can you, can you tell me what mm -hmm. do you see? What's the future of Unicase mm -hmm. in your mind? Right? What's your vision? What right. do you want to accomplish long term? Right. Um, <coughs> we, as a team, uh, yeah. we set the vision, which is uh, uh, we hope that we can achieve within 10 years. Uh, our vision is we um, the social our unique enterprise is social, is social enterprise, enterprise. Yeah. Uh, because that the employment hmm. uh, they they came from community except me yeah. so that uh, we uh, as a social enterprise envision the, the minimizing the number of children hmm. at risk um, and then by overcoming uh, uh, each challenges mm -hmm. or trials and then also accepting the meaning of life that's our motto and then say, say it again one more time you went fast <laughs> oh. ah, sorry yeah we the social enterprise yeah. envision yeah. to minimize the number of children at risk on the study uh, mm -hmm. yeah, on the streets okay mm -hmm. by uh, overcoming uh, uh, challenges and then uh, accepting the meaning of life because each person has a meaning of life. Oh, yes. quite deep a vision. <laughs> that's not right. a vision, it's deep, so that's it's right. underground. It's In right. fact, amazingly, those words came from the youth. They mm. formed it. They that's formed right, it. Not, not me, in fact. We, oh. we create that kind of vision together. So uh, I'm quite lucky to meet those uh, talented you know, children at risk and then also youth. Mm. You know, I'm in the business of uh, vision forming. I help people form their visions and missions. So mm -hmm. that would be a world of insightful thinkers. So that would be a world of insightful uh, children. That's right. what it would be. Right. That's the kind of thing. Mm -hmm. JICA, what is the vision of JICA? What is long term for JICA in the Philippines? What do you see happening now that you've been here only three months? Well, <laughs> <laughs> what I think now is, of course, uh, how to just align that uh, your government strategies and the policy for the development, and also you also to pursue that. Also, the, the in the Philippines is one of the uh, characteristic is it's a quite a good number of the civic organization. So in that terms, how do we support 
civil organizations and also the NGOs in the Philippines. So keep the balance and the That's partnership right. working together. Okay, thank you very much for this interview. But before I take you away from this depth of discussion, I want to bring this discussion to a light stage. No? What do you find likable and funny in the Philippines? <laughs> That is different from Japan. Take your time and pick something that you like very much or you enjoy very much about the Philippines. So don't be shy. It's okay. <laughs> you don't have to insult. Okay. Maybe the traffic jams. <laughs> <laughs> you like traffic jams? In the no. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite severe. And the traffic jam is a very, very, uh, you know, that is, of course, in the Tokyo, we have a traffic jam. But yeah. The Manila is very, very serious. <laughs> so that's something you find funny. How funny about you? What do you find yeah, funny? Related to that, uh, always we, we encounter traffic jam here, in especially in Metro Manila. Yeah. But always people mention that, uh, sorry, we are late because of traffic jam. <laughs> they can calculate. Ah, you're <laughs> right. So it's, it's, it's interrelated. <laughs> so if they remove the traffic jam, people will never be late. <laughs> that's amazing. OK. What is that one beautiful thing about the Philippine culture? Not the land, not the people, something about its behavior, something about its value system that you think you can take from the Philippines and give it to the Japanese culture. What would that be? Maybe hospitality. Mm -hmm. Hospitality, yes. the sense of hospitality, the trait of hospitality. And that lacks in Japan. I thought the Japanese people are very nice. You know, they walk on the tiptoes <laughs> and they drink tea and stuff. So very polite. So you think they would eat But good people is very, very open here and very kindness. And I really enjoy and appreciate that. So you would take that to Japan. What would you take? What yes. would you take back home? I agree with him. And then at the same time, no matter what happens, like sorrows or uh, difficulties, mm -hmm. they can smile. That's a great uh, um, strength in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because Japanese people, are, sometimes we are too serious. But you don't uh, look serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of westernized in a yeah, way. I'm not the typical. Yeah, but uh, uh, what I learned is like uh, we can sing together, laugh together, dance together. Mm. You know, those kind of things that uh, we can so encourage ourselves. So the Filipinos ourselves. have grace under pressure. Very talented. Talented mm -hmm. grace mm -hmm. under pressure. Right. All right, so um, well, my interview is over. Thank you for these insights. Now, if you want to announce the website, if you want to invite your friends and customers, so of course, Jaika doesn't want to invite them. <laughs> uh, but if you need any support, the camera is yours. You can take one minute and talk about Jaika, anything that I might have missed. And you can talk about Unikase. So, ladies, go first. Okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, Unikase is uh, not only for providing the, the job opportunity for youth, but also we provide the uh, uh, natural food. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, collect the, the organic vegetables or fruits, and then also tuna from Mindanao, those kind of uh, uh, great ingredients, so that we're concerned about the people's health. Uh, so, hopefully, we can provide the uh, healthy food and then uh, relaxation for the customers. Oh, you can sit cross legged in a uh, <laughs> shop and eat? Is that relaxation? Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, and you're located in Jupiter, Jupiter corner Street. of Mars, like a Jupiter cosmo. corner Mars. Opo. So it's near Oppo. <laughs> <laughs> it's near Max's restaurant, Max Jupiter, uh, yes, right. somewhere mm -hmm. right there, mm -hmm. Unikase. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly near, uh, uh, near behind the BDO. Behind BDO and mm -hmm. Jupiter. All right, Sir Mitsugi, you one minute about Jaika, whatever you wanna say. Well, <laughs> it's a. Uh, uh, anyway, so we have is a uh, quite long history to support the Philippines country, yeah. and uh, we are studying that since 1966 to the history of the Philippines. So mm -hmm. we would like to extend more the activity of the Philippines, but mm -hmm. maybe uh, as far as I was, I'm in the Philippines. I'm trying to find out is a quite uh, good uh, job and work with the Philippine peoples, and then also I would like to just. Uh, extend that activities to the not only for the government and also the people in the Philippines as well. Just how to support its uh, remote area civic organization. All right, wish you both the very best of luck. And how do you say that in Japanese? Wish you best of luck. How do you wish best of luck in Japanese? <laughs> Can you? 
we don't usually say you don't, don't say good luck in Japanese. <laughs> all right, no good luck then. All right. Gokento o inori shimasu. It's kind of long. Gokento o inori itashimasu. Gokento o inori itashimasu. Onorita shimasu. What did I say that? Right? <laughs> yes, all right, so perfect. that's that thing. All right, good luck. Thank you Thank for you being much. on Expat Insight. It's a pleasure to have you, and really God bless you and all of you. Thank you very much. So that was uh, Mr. Mitsugi and Ms. Nakamura from Japan. Next week on Expat Insights, we will have two ladies from the Philippines. One is a judge at the Quezon City Regional Trial Court, and another one has been leading the outsourcing industry for the longest time. So stay. Um, We'll see you next Sunday at Expat Insights. Good night and thank you for watching. <laughs>